Men, and as usual, I use the term loosely. Hey, uh, this video is a little different than most of the ones I do. Uh, I needed to make a dial indicator holder uh, so that I could pop a dial indicator in my quick change tool post and get it to come out on center on whatever the piece was that I was working on. I had previously made a holder uh, for the dial indicator. Uh, the problem was that the holder I made was not was not very well thought out, and it did not hold the dial indicator uh, directly on center with whatever the workpiece was that I was trying to indicate on. And as you can imagine, that would cause all kinds of problems if you're trying to be precise about something. And lately, I've been using my four-jaw chuck a lot more because I've needed parts to be uh, a lot more precise, a lot more on center. Uh, my three-jaw chuck, uh, when I chuck something up in there, uh, I'm lucky if I could get it to come out uh, within three or four thousandths out around on it. Uh, that three-jaw chuck does not hold things on center particularly well. This particular video is not really meant to be instructive in any way whatsoever. Uh, I am a machinist hack. Uh, there's some things I could do fairly well, but for the most part, I'm kind of a machinist hack. Uh, if you want to watch real machinists, there's plenty of other uh, YouTube machinists out there who actually know what they're doing. Uh, but that isn't me. Uh, a couple of things to kind of note on this is I really didn't measure much of anything. Uh, I had an idea in my head of what this thing needed to look like and how it needed to function. Uh, but I really did not draw out any plans. I really didn't make any measurements. Uh, I just worked off of an idea. And uh, that could be pretty uh, a pretty dangerous thing to do. If it happens to work out for you, great. Uh, if it doesn't, you just wasted a lot of time and material making something that doesn't work right. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I think I probably could have saved myself a lot of time if I had made a drawing and actually used dimensions uh, rather than just trying to eyeball this thing as I went along. And speaking of time spent on it, uh, this video... Uh, is pretty much continuous real time. Uh, there are times when I walk away from the machine and of course that time is edited out of there. Uh, but for the most part this is real time. Uh, the video is about 11 minutes long and everything is shown at 20 speed. So what that's like 220 uh, actual minutes, you know the 11 times 20. Uh, divide that by 60. It's something like four hours of uh, real-time screwing around with this thing. Uh, Mr. Safety uh, does have to make a brief appearance here. Uh, I want to comment a couple of things about myself. Number one, uh, you may notice that I always wear safety glasses. I don't know, a couple of years ago, uh, I was doing something with a Dremel tool, and I had safety glasses on. In any case, a chunk of whatever it was uh, managed to get around the uh, lens of the safety glass, and I ended up with a piece of steel embedded in my eyeball. 
uh, it was stuck there for three days until I could see a uh, an eye surgeon. Uh, the piece of steel was in there long enough that it started to rust in my eye, and I had a rust ring around it. Always, always, always wear safety glasses. Uh, you know, the chips fly off of this thing in any and all directions. Uh, you, you can't be too careful. Like I said, even with the safety glasses, uh, a piece got around one time and hit me in the eye. You got to be careful. One other safety note. Uh, I'm wearing a scrubby old hoodie out here most of the time. The lathe is in an unheated shop. You know, down in Texas, uh, there really isn't too much of an issue. But anyway, I've got old hoodie on because it's cold. And uh, you may notice the strings for the hood on the hoodie are dangerously close to the hand wheel on the uh, cross slide. And uh, when this thing is auto feeding, I've noticed myself that I was dangerously close to having that string get sucked up by that wheel and it would have probably pulled my face right into this thing. I really hadn't noticed the issue with the uh, strings on the hoodie until I uh, watched this video while I was editing it. So uh, I learned at least one very valuable lesson from that. Cut the strings, uh, which I did as soon as I got done watching this thing the first time. If you're morbidly curious, uh, do a YouTube search on uh, lathe accidents, machining accidents. Uh, there is some truly horrific stuff out there. Most, if not all of this, is pretty straightforward, simple machining. Um, I change tool bits a lot. I'm just experimenting with different uh, tooling that I have to see what kind of surface finish I get. Uh, some of the tool bits were brought brand new. Uh, I go to a lot of estate sales, garage sales, and I pick up a lot of used stuff. Uh, good tools are expensive. Uh, cheap tools are just that cheap and they don't work very well. Uh, of course, the used stuff I get at garage sales and estate sales, you never know uh, how well that shit's going to work. But for a dollar or two, it's always worth taking a chance on. The one operation that I thought was kind of clever on my part was uh, using the uh, boring bar to create a round pocket so that the uh, dial indicator could kind of drop into that pocket and thus lower it down far enough so that I could bring it on center line of the part being machined. Uh, I thought that was kind of clever. It worked pretty well. I got a decent finish uh, in that pocket, so I was real happy with that. Real proud of myself. Like I say, to a real machinist, probably no big deal. Probably lots of other ways that that could have been done. But hey, for me it worked and it accomplished what I needed to get done. And just an FYI, this is a Smithy Granite uh, 1324 machine. I bought this new a few years ago. Uh, prior to this, I had another smithy machine that I actually bought by accident on eBay. Uh, this machine works uh, pretty good for the most part. It's, it's had some issues, and I've had to do a couple things to it to make it a little more functional. But generally speaking, I'm very happy with it. It works well within its limitations as a small mill lathe combo machine. Uh, if weight wasn't an object, I'd rather have a real lathe than a real mill. But, geez, I can't move something like that around on my property, and I don't have place for it. So, uh, for what I do, this uh, is adequate, although just barely in a lot of the sense. I do intend to do a video one of these days uh, about the pluses and minuses of this machine and show you just a few of the small mods I did to it to make it a little more user-friendly for me. So there you have it, the finished part. Uh, generally, I'm pretty happy with that. Decent surface finish all the way around. Functionally, it does exactly what it needs to do. It drops the dial indicator down and moves it out 
so that I could get it to line up on center with whatever the workpiece is I'm uh, trying to hold. I made this thing to be used to uh, uh, indicate runout on uh, parts I put in my four jaw chuck. And generally speaking, when I put something in the four jaw and indicated with this thing, I could get it down to uh, two or three ten thousandths of an inch, which I'm real happy with for anything I do that is well within my tolerance. Of course, the big advantage is that it is on a uh, quick change tool post fixture. So I could pop this thing in and out of the uh, quick change tool post in just a matter of seconds. Uh, no dicking around with, uh, you know, any kind of setup or, uh, you know, having to do anything weird. Once I got it adjusted on center, it's always on center. Uh, pop it in, pop it out, and boom, you're ready to go. A couple final notes. I am frightfully close to 100 subscribers. I got that set of uh, Genuine HD Sportster connecting rods I'm giving away with the new bearing races in it. Uh, push me over 100 uh, and then just uh, send me a message and uh, tell me you want the rods and are yours. No strings attached. Well, that pretty well wraps up this little project. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you got a little something out of it. I enjoy making these things. Uh, please subscribe and please come back. Uh, Y'all take it easy. In the meantime, I am out of here. Jeez, look at the run out on this piece of tube I stuck in there. <laughs> that ain't the lathe chuck out that far. That thing must be bent. Anyway, uh, that's why you need an indicator. Well, of course, you don't need an indicator to see the runout on that old lump. That thing is screwed.